Hello students, let us look at another question of science and technology that was asked in this year's UPSC mains exam on paper 3. Now the question that I am taking here is question number 16. The question says what is the main task of India's third ma moon mission? It is in reference to Chandrayaan 3. What is the India's main task of India's third moon mission? Which, which could not be achieved in its earlier missions? List the countries that have achieved this particular task. Introduce the subsystems in the spacecraft launched and explain the role of virtual launch control center at the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center which contributed to the successful launch from Hari, Shri Harikota. Now this answer has to be written in total 250 words. Now of course this question happens to be a very long question and on top of that the demand of the question is also quite expensive. right? So if I simply mark the keywords, if I simply mark the keywords in this particular question, so first you have to talk about the main task of the third moon mission of India, which has not been achieved in the earlier missions, right? So and secondly, you have to talk about the countries that have already made this achievement. This is the second part of the answer. The third part is what is what are the various subsystems that the spacecraft have and what is their basic applications? I explain their role. And then you have to talk about the role of virtual launch control center, which is located at the Vikram Bhai Space Center, Vikram, Sar, uh, Vikram uh, Sarabhai Space Center at Bangalore, and which contributed into the successful launch. So there happens to be three major parts, uh, four major parts of the answer, uh, including the main objectives. Then we have to talk about the the countries that have achieved these ob objectives before India, and then we have to talk about the subsystems of Chandrayaan three, and also the role of virtual launch control center now let us start so in the in because this question itself has four things demanded i would normally suggest students to write the shortest possible introduction because we already have so much to express while answering this question so india has recently become as you guys know we have become the fourth country to successfully demonstrate soft moon landing soft moon landing basically talks about that when uh, 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 when something lands without causing any kind of con some a very calm controlled at the walking speed when something lands right we call it soft moon landing it doesn't damage any hardware internally india has also become the first country to land near the lunar south pole so we have landed somewhere around 300 350 kilometers away from the lunar south pole so we are also the first country right in this in this particular achievement now let's start with the point that upsc have asked so Initially, I mentioned what all countries have been able to achieve these uh, this particular objective. So when Russia was in the name, when Russia was you know like for, uh, former Soviet Union, USSR, they had a mission called Luna mission that successfully reached the moon surface, that successfully touched the moon surface. If I'm not wrong, it was Luna nine, right, which successfully touched the moon sur moon surface. Then USA was the second country to successfully demonstrate landing on the moon under their under their mission called Apollo. And you know that in the current times, USA is also I have undertaken another mission called Artemis program, which is also related to landing on moon. Right? Although the Artemis program is yet to demonstrate moon landing, but they have successfully demonstrated one of the projects already. Then China is the third country which has successfully achieved this objective, and they have their mission called Chang E, which has which happens to successfully demonstrate a landing on the moon surface. So these are the three countries which have already demonstrated. Remember, apart from this, Israel. Japan are the other two countries that have tried, but unfortunately they haven't been they haven't been successful so far, right? Now, what are the main objectives of the Chandrayaan three project? So, the Chandrayaan three project has three main major objectives: to demonstrate soft landing near the lunar um, uh, south pole. Basically, lunar south pole has not been typically used in the definition or in the in the actual write up of the main objectives. It simply says on the designated lunar site. But the designated lunar site itself has been closer to the lunar south pole. Then second is to perform roving on the lunar surface. Roving means that there is, happens to be a rover uh, attached in the Chandrayaan 3, which is nothing but a moving cart. And it is supposed to travel around the nearby area and conduct certain experiments. And then the third point is conduct on-site scientific experiments. So we have to provide on-site, we have to perform on-site scientific experiments with the help of the rover as well as the lander, right? Now, when you look at the main payloads or the subsystems of the Chandrayaan 3 module, so we basically have three modules here. One is the propulsion module. The propulsion module is the one that happens to propel the Chandrayaan into the right orbit around the moon. Right? It was technically almost 100 kilometers above the moon's surface. Chandrayaan 3 was supposed to be propelled. So the propulsion module that we have 
it will detach it will put the chandrayaan 3 almost 100 kilometers above the moon's surface so that was the objective of propulsion module and this propulsion module did not just complete this objective but also it will remain around the moon will keep revolving around the moon for the additional 3 to 6 months and it also has certain payloads attached which will, which will perform other activities of moon observation as well as the earth's observation from the moon right so this is basically the propulsion module then the second module is the landing module the landing module is the one which is the actual you know autonomous landing system which was which has been designed indigenously at isro and this is the landing module which is supposed to land insert into the moon's gravity and then eventually land over the moon's surface so it is basically built up with a technique of you know ensuring that whenever it will start landing it will keep slowing down as it lands and it will eventually touch a very very slow walking speed so that when it touches the surface it will not have any possible damages to the entire equipment and the landing module is also built in with so with features of reading the seismicity reading the ions the ionization of the gases ionization of molecules because of sun's radiation and such activities then we have the rover the rover that has been equipped in the in the lander it is a six six wheel rover that will eventually get detached and slide away from the lander and both these rover and the lander had a working life of almost 14 earth days which is equal to one moon or one lunar day right one lunar day's time and rover is the one that is going to perform some on-site experiments which will in which will involve you know uh, studying of the minerals finding the chemical compositions of the substances on the moon surface you guys might have also heard quite recently the the uh, rover of chandrayaan 3 had recently discovered that there is a presence of sulfur on the moon soil right which is a new discovery made by any country then the last part the last part of the question is about virtual launch control center now this virtual launch control center or vlcc it is located at the vikram sarabhai space center at bangalore now what is this particular center related to this launch control center is basically a remote remotely located observational deck you can say so basically the launching takes place from Shri Harikota. Shri Harikota is at the coast of Andhra Pradesh and the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center is located in Karnataka. So from the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center by you know uh, by, with the help of the VLCC Virtual Launch Control Center we can do remote based observations, checkup, diagnosis of the entire rocket and the propulsion system. So if there is any kind of error that is detected it can easily it can easily detect all those errors staying at a remotely far off locations from the Shri Harikota launching center. The launching station's name is Satish Dhawan Space Station. You guys must, must have heard of it, right? But this is the virtual launch control center. So what is this particular center is? So this is basically like an observational deck, guys. It's an observational deck. And this basically observes the entire rocket propulsion, it observes the entire payloads of the rocket and make sure that all the systems, they are diagnosed, they are checked with the right parameters required. So if there is any kind of anomaly in the functioning of any sensor, any equipment, any component of the rocket, the VLCC will be able to intercept it way before the launch and we will be able to avoid any possibility of a uh, mission failure. So this becomes a very good you know, way of ensuring that the missions executions or any space missions executions are done with flawless chances of failure, right? I hope you are able to understand. So these are the important pointers that one is that every student is expected to write for this particular answer and in order to conclude this particular question I have taken a visionary approach guys the visionary approach only talks about what may happen in future and how these things are going to benefit in the future so I have simply asked to I have simply written a, a you know a conclusion with the success of Chandrayaan 3 mission India's future missions like Aditya L1 Gaganyaan and Shukrayaan Shukrayaan is our Venus mission guys they all seems to be a logical step in the direction of space exploration considering the scientific and technological progress it can bring remember guys space technology is just one domain but the application of space technology can go widespread in fact there is an international united nations office if you want you can use this approach also in the conclusion it's called united nations office for outer space affairs and as per the united nations office for outer space affairs space technology alone can provide solutions to almost all 17 sustainable development goals. I believe all of you guys are aware of the sustainable development goals. There are total 17 sustainable development goals 
and it is believed that space technology alone can provide solutions to all the 17 sustainable development goals. For example, if you talk about eradicating poverty or extreme hunger, space technology has developed, you know, modules which can help in providing sustainable livelihood to a person, which can help in providing better quality standards of food, better nutritional security and such things. Because once you build these kind of ecosystems for astronauts, you get a chance of building the things which can also help in supplementing better livelihood in on land. I hope you guys can understand this. So this is basically the uh, the major pointer that one is expected to write for this answer on Chandrayaan 3. Thank you.